Hello and welcome to this tutorial, which is the second in a series of two on SNMP monitoring. While in the first part I described how to program management applications to retrieve monitoring information from SNMP agents, in this second part I will demonstrate how these applications can be practically used to pull a real SNMP agent. I will be demonstrating three exercises. The first and the second involve retrieving single and multiple instance objects respectively, and the last one is on periodic polling and averaging. You can carry out the experiments on your own machine. All you need is a terminal and an SNMP agent running on a remote host. The code as well as the instructions on how to use it can be accessed through the link at the bottom of the slide. So to carry out the first exercise and retrieve the value of single instance objects, we need to execute the code of the class SNMP get. Instructions on how to create this program were provided in the previous tutorial. So this class takes two arguments. The first one uh, is the address of the remote host on, on which the agent is running. Uh, so in this case, I'm using a university server. Of course, if you try this yourself, you need to provide a host that you have access to. The second argument is the identifier of the object we wish to retrieve. I'm using uh, the identifier of the total number of segments received on the host. Um, remember that the object identifier are sim single instance objects and with a zero. So when we run the program, we send and receive uh, the SNMP message. Uh, the send uh, type here, which is set to minus 96, uh, identifies the get request command we encode in the message. The request ID here, which is set to one, uh, is an integer that identifies a particular SNMP request. This index is echoed back in the response uh, from the SNMP agent, allowing the SNMP manager to match an incoming response to the appropriate request. 161 here uh, is the port through which the communication takes place. Remember that the, um, an SNMP message is a packet sent over UDP IP to port uh, 161. Then we have the data we send in the SNMP packet as an octet string, as well as the data we receive back. So this is the data uh, we send, and uh, here, this is the data that we receive. Uh, notice that the response data is richer as indicated by the longer string. This is because the response message now contains the value of the object in the variable binding. Now, from the response data, we can extract and print the ID of the object and the associated counter value as shown here. This application allows to get more than one count at a time. I can include another argument when running the code, for example, the object identifier of the total number of segments sent uh, by the host. So I just need to change the, add and change the object identifier here. Uh, here is the result, here at the bottom is the result uh, with the two counter values. Okay, let's now move to the second exercise, which involves retrieving tabular objects using the getNext command. Remember that getNext returns the immediately next object relative to the object identifier we set as target. This is useful when we do not know the full identifier of instances of an object. To carry out this exercise uh, and retrieve a table, we need to execute the code of the class uh, TCP Connection Manager, which takes two arguments. As in the previous exercise, the first argument is the uh, remote host. The second argument is the initial table object identifier for which I'm using the one corresponding to the TCP connection table. So when we run the program, we retrieve the whole table using successive get next requests. Let me just scroll up at the top of the, uh, uh, of the table. So um, together with an initial table OID, the first four columns of each entry in the table make a unique TCP connection. These are the local address and port and the remote address and port. The last column here represents the state of the connection. Having discovered um, specific object instances, I can also use the first exercise to directly monitor the state of uh, a particular connection. If I, for example, find the, uh, the previous uh, exercise and I use the object identifier of the uh, TCP connection table, then I can construct the whole instance of the object 
using the uh, local address, the local port, the remote address here. And the remote port. So this gives me back the value of the spe specific instance, which uh, is 5, and this value corresponds to uh, the state established as shown here. So I can also find the connection I have with the remote host if I check my, uh, my IP address. Uh, it starts with 178, ends uh, with 82. 178, here it is. So this is my connection to the uh, remote host. Okay, let's now move to a third and last exercise, which is on periodic polling and averaging. This is useful when we want to determine the throughput of network interfaces and avoid high fluctuations. To perform continuous monitoring, we poll an SNMP agent periodically and we use the result to compute the uniformly weighted moving average for a specific counter. To carry out this exercise and do averaging, we need to execute the code of the class AWMABG, which takes four arguments. The first is the object identifier, which is the same as the one used in the first exercise. The second is the monitoring interval which in this case I set to 2. The third is the averaging window size, uh, for which I use a value of 3. And the last is the uh, target host. This means that I will be polling the agent every 2 seconds, and I will be using 3 consecutive measurements to compute the average throughput. So, when we run the program, we start getting instantaneous observations of the uh, raw value, uh, before we start to compute the average. Uh, from initial results here, you can notice that there's not much happening. Usually, you would set a bigger polling period and window size to get some results, but this would take more time. So, please increase these values if you try this on your machine. Now, uh, I will try to generate um, some traffic on the monitor interface and uh, wait to see if we have a change in the um, value of the weight moving average. So, you can now notice that uh, there's a change in the average value here, which then falls back to a zero. This concludes the two tutorials on SNMP monitoring. On this slide, you can find some useful references. Thanks for tuning in.